What is up future filmmakers? Today I'm going to be covering the basic keyboard shortcuts for Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get started. The first keyboard shortcut I would like to cover is going to be how to import. So normally you can just go into your project window and double click and that will pull up the import menu, but you can always do command I. And so let's just import some footage. So this is footage from a project I did a couple of years ago. So the next keyboard shortcut I would like to cover is the I and the O key or marking ins and outs. So hypothetically speaking, I wanna use this clip of Comerica Park. I could just click mark, I could just you know skim through here or scroll through here with the scroll wheel on my mouse. You could click you know, mark an in here and you know, like oh, mark an out here. But this is all about keyboard shortcuts. So let's actually learn some keyboard shortcuts. So for marking an in, and as you can see, if you just kind of scroll over here, it will actually tell you mark in is I, who would have thought? And mark out is O, who would have also thought? So the keyboard shortcut for this one will be command N, which is create a new sequence. Um, and you can also just create new sequences by dragging and dropping clips on the timeline. Um, that is a pretty quick way to do it, but if you want to have more control over, you, you know, you want to give it a name um, up front and pick a specific codec that you would like to stick with or uh, preset, um, you can do that as well. For this one, we're just going to do tutorial. Well, make sure you spell it right. Now, hypothetically, let's say you decided to just drag and drop your clip on the timeline like that. It creates a new sequence with the exact same name as the clip if you just click on it or um, if you even just hit enter it'll allow you to type so the next one is insert and overwrite this is going to be your comma and your period key so i have this clip in and out points selected i have a timeline your comma will be insert wherever your playhead is so let's say it's at the beginning zero 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 you can hit insert and uh, you can see there's little clip selected on there and you can also do the period key which is overwrite now let's say I have my playhead selected here and I hit the comma which is insert what it's going to do is it's going to split the original clip it's going to add an edit right here wherever this is and put this clip that's ever whatever's in the source monitor right in between those so you'll see so here let me actually find another clip so this one's the Spirit of Detroit. We're gonna mark it in, we're gonna mark it out. Watch what happens when I hit the comma key. It's going to insert this clip in between the beginning and the end of this. So just, you know, kind of something to be mindful of. You know, you can just hit the period key. You know, you, you can just move the playhead out and hit the period key and then you can just kind of delete the space in between because you know if you get if you think you're close enough to the end and you accidentally hit insert you're going to get one of these you're going to be watching and then you see the little frame right there of uh, the comerica clip so you get a little flash frames here and there sometimes that happens drag and drop this comerica clip with no ins and outs selected and we're actually just going to simply watch it And you see there's little shakes here and there. I could have made ins and outs more specifically here and here and then figure it out. But like, let's say you have like a big clip or um, an interview or you know something and you just wanna just kinda watch it as it goes. Uh, you know, everyone's editing style is different. Once you start editing regularly, you're gonna adopt your own style, your own techniques, tips, tricks, that kind of thing, just based on your own experiences. So. Let's say I want to uh, have it selected just the clip from here to here. There's a few ways you can do that. You can pull this in till it matches the playhead. You can do the same thing here till it matches the playhead. You know, or we're gonna you know undo all that. Or you can get out your razor tool and trim these and go back to your select tool and select both of these and then hit delete. But I think the quickest and the easiest way to do it will save you a lot of time by using the uh, Q and W keys. So the Q will delete everything left 
of the playhead and ripple delete that section. So watch what happens, I'm gonna hit Q, boom. Look at that, that whole front section's gone. Wow, saved a whole bunch of time. The next one is W and, and you guessed it, it deletes everything to the right of the playhead. Boom, just like that. So just trim that clip down pretty quickly. So once you do that, it, once you learn that one and you get good practice with using that keyboard shortcut, those keyboard shortcuts, I should say, you're gonna save yourself a lot of time. So another one um, I'm gonna show you is Command B, which opens up a new bin, just like that, or folder. Title this one Footage. And I wanna, let's say I wanna select all of this. I can click one and I can hit uh, Command and just click on all of them, or I can click on one and click shift and go to the top one and it will select everyone in between. And I'm just gonna drag it and drop it in my footage folder. I found one of the keys to editing is just kind of keeping uh, as clean of a possible project folder. Um, I've done projects where, I mean, there's just bins upon bins upon bins and sequences and nests and you know adjustment layers, black video, bars and tones. I mean, you name it, it's just, it can get really messy. Let's just say I have a bunch of bins and I can't find anything and I like looking for something. You can search for it and there it is. And coincidentally I used a uh, clip that was already there. So like Renaissance Center, oh cool, I found my clip. So um, yeah, but I, I love bins. I love keeping everything in a specific folder for a specific purpose, titled. You can even label them uh, different colors, uh, which, is, which is nice. So like let's say you have B-roll of various different things, you can, you can change the colors and it's so much easier to organize. Uh, organization really is key. So the next keyboard shortcut I'm gonna show you is going to be the Rate Stretch tool, which you can actually find here or just hit R on your keyboard. Uh, so let's find a, let's find here. Here's this clip right here. It's got a little bit of movement in it. It's a little shaky, but okay. So we've got this, got this clip here, and let's say it's like, you know, it, it's only, let's say it's only a, a second or two long, but, it, but we need the spot we need to put the B-roll is uh, actually a bit longer. Let's say it's like, you know, almost you know, three seconds. Once you hit R and you have the great stretch tool selected, say that 10 times fast, um, you just kind of grab the end of this video and you bring it to Look at that, exactly three seconds. So it'll tell you, um, if you look close enough, we're gonna go back to the select tool by hitting V on our keyboard. You can actually see it'll tell you how much this clip is slowed down by. So this one's slowed down by, it looks like 57.78%. So, and you can actually tell by scrubbing through it, it's, uh, you, you know, it, it takes, takes longer. However, if you do try to slow something down that's in, you know, like a 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second frame rate, you would not be able to slow that footage down as much versus if you use uh, 120 frames per second or even 60 frames per second for that matter. So just keep that in mind when you guys and girls are shooting stuff. Um, just know what frame rate you're using, know the benefits, the pros, the cons of using each frame rate, um, which I'll get to in a later video. I'm actually gonna try to combine three keyboard shortcuts into this one little section here. So in order to zoom in and out on the timeline, you can use this right here, pull it out, we'll make it smaller, you'll zoom out, push it in, you'll zoom in. You can also achieve this by using the plus or the minus on the keyboard. You get it, plus zooms in, minus zooms out, simple enough. You can also hit Z and it'll bring up this magnifying glass and you can zoom in. And now you're probably thinking, oh no, I'm zoomed in and it's not giving me the minus. If you just hold down alt wow. on your keyboard, the little plus will turn into a minus. And you can zoom out. Back to V for a selection tool. Another amazing keyboard shortcut is, this is going to be called zoom to sequence. Let's say I had like a bunch of clips and I'm so sick of just zooming in and zooming out and all this other stuff. You're just going to hit this backslash. I believe it's the backslash. It's the slash under the delete key. And this will actually just kind of, wherever you were zoomed into, it will zoom it all the way to your, uh, to your timeline, which is great because if you've got a lot of clips and you're, you know, this will just zoom out so you can see everything. 
The next keyboard shortcut is the track select forward tool, which is in your toolbar, it's right here, or you can hit A on your keyboard. For this one, let's hypothetically say you have a clip that you want to fit in between this first clip and this second clip. And normally you're like, oh, I gotta, you know, move all this down and then you can put it in, you know, like this is really great if you have like a ton of stuff in your sequence, like you just can't grip everything with this. So what you can do is you can hit A on your keyboard and wherever you select it, it will select everything beyond that point and you can just kind of move it and then you can kind of drag your clip on and you can go back to your selection tool and ripple delete these and boom, now it's in there and you didn't have to go through the trouble of going like this to your entire timeline and then moving it, that would be a total pain. It is A on the keyboard. The next one is going to be M for marker. Now, the footage I have here is not ideal for this situation to show you, but this is great if you do interviews, you're doing interviews, you kind of have to remember what people say and where they say it exactly, so it's gonna be M. So if you look here on your source monitor and you're scrolling, you're scrolling and you're like, oh, this is important, you just hit M. And boom, you have this little green marker and you can, you know, make a ton of them. You know, this is great for me, especially I'm working on this independent documentary about mental health awareness and mental health care in the United States. So for all of my interviews, I can actually pull up that project for you guys at some point in a tutorial. You'll notice that I have like tons of markers and inside of them, I actually transcribe what people say so I can search for it later on. And like, let's say, hypothetically speaking, you wanna mark an entire section. You can just go to where this marker is, hold the Alt key and pull it out. It'll actually make the marker much larger. So you'll notice this whole section is now a marker. And you can actually double click it and it'll, you can change the color, you can name it. I am looking to do a whole tutorial on markers, so don't get too overwhelmed by all that. Uh, I'll get to it in another video. For this next keyboard shortcut, I'm not exactly sure what to call this, but it kind of goes along with the track select forward tool in the sense that like, let's say you've got, um, you know, some clips on the timeline here and you, you forget you have one that you want to put in between here and let's just make it this medium shot. So you, what you do is you would drag and drop, but you would hold the command key while you do it. So you'll notice these little arrows pop up here. And what that's actually saying is while I'm holding the command key, it's telling me everything after this clip will be pushed forward. So you can see how I had this clip. Oh, look, there it goes right in between. This next tool is very basic. It's actually right here, the razor tool C. You can hit C on your keyboard. It's pretty self-explanatory what this tool does. It just lets you cut pieces of this video. It actually lets you make edits. So this next one is add edit. So let's say you have this clip on the timeline here and you need to make a, a cut somewhere. But instead of like, you know, going all the way to your razor tool or just hitting, you know, C on the keyboard and finding, you know, kind of like roughly where you want to make your cut and then cutting the footage and then dragging it over and then cutting it again. It's just, uh, it's kind of time consuming. So this one is going to be Command K and what it will do is it will make an edit wherever your playhead is. So if you want to get all really specific and, you know, pay really close attention to your details, you can see the, the camera moves here and I want to actually cut it just before that. You can kind of just drag this and hit Command K and there you go. You've made edits here on your clip. So when I was really new to editing and I was kind of more about just kind of clicking on the specific tool that I wanted, um, sometimes, again, when I was a novice, I would accidentally hit, you know, a key on the keyboard and, you know, you'd see the tool pop up and I'd be like, oh my gosh, what is happening right now? One of the best keyboard shortcuts to know is to go back to your select tool, which is just V. So you'll notice V is what allows me to, to move the clips around. If you have the hand tool selected, you can't do that. Um, just kind of goes over the, the sequence and your, your panel. But V is always, should be always your, your, your default uh, to go back to. It's your select tool. So the next one is going to be your slip tool, which is Y. It's also right here in your toolbar. So 
hypothetically, you got this clip on your timeline and you're like, oh man, I actually meant to put my in here and my out here rather than like deleting this and going back, you know, you could just kind of, you know, move it out and then trim this in or hit Y on your keyboard and it will actually tell you here at the bottom how many frames you're moving it to the right or to the left towards your endpoint or towards your out point. And you'll see here in your program panel, it will actually show you what the beginning and the end of this clip would look like. Now, they look the same because this clip is on a tripod, but yep, definitely a good one to know. So this next one kind of goes along with the track select forward tool and the uh, command drop. So let's get a couple clips on your timeline here, just for the sake of argument. Um, so like, let's say you wanna make this Comerica Park clip a little bit longer. Instead of like moving this one over and then dragging this one out and then closing the gap between them, now that's a little time consuming. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually just gonna hold the command key while you're selected at the end. And you'll notice when I'm not holding the command key, it's red. And when I am holding the command key, it turns yellow. So you'll see here, if I drag this out, not only will it make this Comerica clip longer, um, but it'll actually move everything behind it, uh, so to speak, along as well. So you can do that, and it'll do the same thing if you pull it in. It'll delete this gap that would be in the middle had I just you know, deleted that, and then I'd have to delete the gap. So a little bit of a time saver there too. This is the select clip playhead. And what this is, is wherever your playhead is on your timeline, let's get some clips on here, and it doesn't really matter what they are. So let's say you wanna select this clip without using your mouse, you just hit D. And you can use the other keyboard shortcuts I showed you, Q and uh, W and, you know, so let's say you didn't want to use the Q and the W. You didn't like what I showed you and you want to go back to, what you could do is you could do, you know, Command K showed you that one earlier and you can do, you know, after the end of this movement, you can do Command K and then you can hit D on the keyboard to select that one. And then if you go up, you know, then you go, you use the up arrow to go all the way to your, your edit. You can also hit D. I mean, it naturally selects if you're using the up and down arrows. So here there's a gap. You wanna move this over, but you know, you're trying to save some time. So you hit D and it actually selects the gap and then you can just delete that and it'll move it. That's definitely a cool one. I'm gonna show you two different ones, the arrow keys and shift arrow keys. So you'll notice the left arrow key goes back one frame at a time. The right arrow key goes forward one frame at a time. The up and down arrow keys actually go to your previous edit, the up key, previous edit, the down key is your next edit. So hypothetically I've got, you know, let's just split these up into separate clips, let's pretend that these are four different clips. Um, so if I'm using the up key, down key, up key, down key, so you can actually kind of scroll through pretty quickly here versus, you know, trying to like drag this directly onto where the, you know, where the clips switch. So, and as I explained in the last one, if you click up, it's automatically going to select the clip that your playhead is on top of. And with, when it comes to the shift and arrow keys, you're gonna do, sh if you do shift left or shift right, you'll notice it actually is going, if you look right here where my time code would be, it will actually go by five frames versus you know one at a time. You can change this, you can change it to 10 frames, um, you know, whatever you want. Uh, I just have mine set for five for the time being. You can definitely, you know, hold it down. It's easy to shuttle through and look at your footage, you know, pretty quickly that way. This shortcut is a pretty good one too. It's called the clear in and out points. And so like, let's say I have this clip selected and uh, you know, these out point, in and out points just aren't what I want them to be. I can actually just hit option or alt and then X and it'll just clear them. Or let's say I have like an effect on a video and I'm trying to render it. You know, let's say like right here between where I mark these ins and outs, let's say I had a clip that had some sort of effect on it and I wanted to render it, which you would know if it needs to be rendered based on the fact that this, this yellow bar here would be red. So that's how you know something needs to be rendered. So once you're done rendering it, you can just hit Alt or Option and then X and it'll clear those points right off for you. You can also, uh, you know, right click on them and you can go to clear in and clear out. 
And you can also, you know, let's see, let's make two. You can go clear in and out, but you know, again, this video is all about keyboard shortcuts and keyboard shortcuts will make you such a faster editor. So Option or Alt X will get rid of both of those. This is the duplicate tool. So you're gonna select whatever you want to duplicate. You know, for, for this, you just hold down Alt and it just duplicates the exact same thing. And you'll notice here what I accidentally did was I clicked Alt before I selected this. So um, let's get rid of these real quick. If I wanna isolate just one, let's say I wanna just duplicate the video, I just hit Alt beforehand and then I drag it. But if I wanna you know, duplicate the video and the audio, then I would select both of them and then I would hold Alt. Or if I just wanna duplicate the audio, I just click on it. This is also another really easy way to like, let's say I don't want the sound on this clip. I can just hold down Alt and then click on the audio and delete it that way as well. The next one is going to be the snap tool. I'm gonna to turn it off real quick. Let's say I have two clips here. We're gonna use my last keyboard shortcut to duplicate this one. You'll notice that it doesn't exactly tell me when these two clips touch. I mean, like I could get really specific and in the end I may end up going, you know, like a frame too short or you know, might overwrite this and you know, frame too long, whatever. So I'm gonna hit S on my keyboard to turn on the snapping. And you'll notice once I get to the end, there'll be this little triangle, snap. And it'll, you'll actually notice the video once you get close enough to something, it'll just kind of be magnetic to an extent. This is really a great tool if you're trying to get something very specific, fine tuning here. So you know, like you wanna trim this down to exactly it'll snap right to the playhead or it'll snap to you know another another video file right there i hope everyone is not <laughs> as exhausted as i am but we've only got three more to go so let's get started the hand tool is h and you guessed it it's right here it looks like a little hand so this is if you have like a really lengthy timeline so let's throw as much stuff on here as i can you know get get a really messy or a lengthy timeline, I should say. So let's use the hand tool here and we can just kind of scrub through here. You know, just kind of move generally down the timeline. You'll notice this little bar moving. It does the same thing as if you just move the bar. You know, you could zoom in and out. Uh, the hand tool is not just for the timeline though. This is where I use it actually, to be honest with you, the least. Where I use it a lot is let's say I'm masking something in the, uh, you know, in the program panel here, or I'm, you know, looking at a fine detail and I'm zooming in 400, you know, and I'm, I'm really like trying to look in one of these windows in the Rensen. You know, you use the hand tool kind of for this. This is something, I use the hand tool primarily more in After Effects, but it is definitely helpful in Premiere as well. So for this next keyboard shortcut is going to be render, which is, which is pretty simple, it's just enter. So as you see here on my uh, timeline, I have a clip of Comerica and I actually have a warp stabilizer on it, which is unnecessary because it was on a uh, tripod. But let's say you had some effects, this is yellow, so it doesn't really need to be rendered, but if it's red, it needs to be rendered. Right now, it's not really doing much because there's not enough effects on it to really make a difference. But if there is a red bar, um, you know, or if it's, let's say it's just on this clip, you can actually mark an in and an out and just render that specific area. So the next and final keyboard shortcut is going to be export, which is going to be command M. Usually takes a second. And this is kind of where you can pick out your, your format, your preset, your codecs, whatever you want, you know, how you want to export the video. I will do another tutorial later on down the road you know, going over specific export settings and stuff like that. And if you have Adobe Media Encoder, you can just hit Q and it'll actually open up Adobe Media Encoder. So if you have a lot of editing to do, you just kind of want it to do it in the background and you want to get some other work done while you're waiting for it, you can just go ahead and hit Q and it'll actually bring up Adobe Media Encoder and uh, start exporting your project. Export here though, it's gonna export it through Premiere which is totally fine, but just know that you will not be able to do anything on Premiere while it's exporting. That concludes today's video, so thank you so much for joining me. I hope I taught you something. Comment, subscribe, like, whatever other YouTubers say at the end of their videos, generic, closing, uh, I don't know what to say, this is awkward for me too. So thanks for joining me. <laughs> hope I taught you something. Have a great day.